Growing up, my dad quoted 1 Corinthians 15.33 more than any other verse. When my parents were worried about someone I was spending time with or they watched another student making bad choices, my dad would say, son, never forget, bad company corrupts good morals. Now, you want it to be the other way. I will be such a powerful influence that they will change. My good company will change their bad morals. Some of you even date that way, called missionary dating. And the thought process is he's got a bad reputation, doesn't go to church, does things I don't agree with, but he's nice. And you watch, he'll change. And if I pass the mic around today, many of you would say, he didn't. <laughs> Parents worry about who their kids choose as friends. Always have, always will. They worry for a good reason. Because who you allow in your close inner circle influences you for right or for wrong. It's not just kids and students. Adults make the same mistake. When a wife who's been faithful to her husband for years suddenly decides she's unhappy and wants out, my question is, who's speaking into her life? It's obvious she's listening to a new voice. When an addict who's been clean for years drops out and relapses, I know he's reconnected with old friends from the old life who've pulled him back to old habits. When someone who's been reasonable suddenly is angry, opinionated, argumentative, and unreasonable, I know there's a new voice in their life. It might be a friend, a Facebook group, a talk radio host. Regardless, he's listening to a new voice. When a student who's always loved and listened to her parents suddenly turns rebellious and withdrawn, there's somebody new speaking into her life. Someone else is speaking against your family and your values. When an encourager becomes critical, I wonder who they're listening to. When someone who's kind and loyal suddenly starts spreading gossip, I know there's a new influence. When a member of the church who's loved and supported the ministry begins to undermine leadership, it's obvious there's a new toxic voice in their life. Most of the time, new opinions and attitudes come from listening to a new voice. When you're in the middle of it, it's difficult to recognize, but those around you can easily see it. If you listen to the wrong voice, you'll make wrong decisions, go the wrong direction, and you'll shut out the right voices. We're continuing our study of the book of Jude. This letter was written because the church was being damaged by false teachers who taught a dangerous false gospel that was confusing the early Christians. They were ruled by their desires and passions instead of being led by God. Not only that, they expected the churches to support their ministry of the false gospel. And people were falling for it. They were attracted to a do-what-you-want-anything-goes pseudo-religion. If you missed Pastor Randy's teaching last week, catch up online at firstnlr.tv or our YouTube channel, First NLR. Today we pick it up at verse 11. Strong words directed at the false teachers. What sorrow awaits them? For they follow in the footsteps of Cain who killed his brother. Like Balaam, they deceive people for money. And like Korah, they perish in their rebellion. Jude used bad people in the Old Testament to describe the actions of the false teachers. Like Cain, violent and jealous. Like Balaam, their goal is money and wealth. Like Korah, they rebel against spiritual authority. When people eat with you, these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, commemorating the Lord's love. And let me pause there. Fellowship meals were an important part of church's life. Taking communion together was not a tiny wafer and a little cup of juice. It was a full meal. People ate together, and they talked about what God was doing in their life. Church involved eating. Not all the time, but much of the time. Now, you're probably ahead of me. This is good news for us today. Because there is a lot of food and eating around this place. It's biblical. Eat together. Talk about Jesus. Celebrate changed lives. Eat some more. 
pray, eat some more, laugh, be together with God's people, eat some more, make a coconut cream pie for your pastor. It's biblical. I'm just, it's just the word. In this case, the false teachers were joining the meals. They were deeply involved with the people and with church life. They weren't outsiders. They'd become insiders. They were devious, deceptive, and manipulative, and they were at the table. And Jude decided enough was enough. He called them out, and then he described them with powerful images. He wanted the church to see them for what they were, wrong voices used by Satan. When these people eat with you in your fellowship meals commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. A reef is a ridge of jagged rock, coral, or sand just above or just below the surface of the sea. A ridge above the surface of the sea isn't dangerous. You can see it. But a ridge below the surface of the sea was dangerous and deadly. They didn't have sonar or depth finders. There was no way to know if you were headed for a reef. The water appeared calm, pleasant. And then suddenly the boat hit a reef and its hole was ripped open. The ship sank because of a danger they couldn't see. A dangerous reef is a wrong voice that's difficult to detect. They cleverly hide their sin and they do their best to deceive you. You fall for the lies and don't see the danger. A wrong voice will sink you when you least expect it. There are three million shipwrecks scattered across the world's oceans. There are far more life wrecks because people didn't see the danger. Jude continued, they're like shameless shepherds who only care for themselves. Again, Jude used familiar imagery. Shepherds had one job, care for the sheep. Shepherds put themselves in harm's way. They did long, hard work to make sure sheep were safe. In John 10, Jesus described himself and said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. These false ter- teachers claimed to lead and guide God's people, but they had no concern for anyone but themselves. They didn't care the, for the flock. They used their positions of leadership to establish a comfortable lives for themselves. They were shameless shepherds. The shameless shepherd wrong voice doesn't care about you. They're focused on themselves, what they want, what they need, how they can get it. They're greedy and self-centered. It's the boyfriend that tempts you to have sex and then dumps you. It's the friend who convinces you to start drinking again but leaves your side when you lose control. Shameless shepherds abandon you at the first sign of trouble. Jude wasn't done. He said they're like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. Again, this was an image that people understood. Palestine was a dry climate. The people were often desperate for rain. If clouds formed, but no rain came, the result was bitter disappointment. The false teachers were like rainless clouds. They promised much, and they delivered little. The wrong voice gets your hopes up, but doesn't deliver. They don't keep their promises to follow through. There are lots of promises, but not a lot of results. They claim we're gonna get married soon, but it never happens. Uh, Financial advisors who make wild promises of big returns with no risk promise something that doesn't exist. You get mad when salespeople do that, when they make claims that can't possibly be true. Commercials for alcohol show you the good life that will happen if you just drink their product. They don't show you the end result. Enjoy it now and pay later. Maybe that was your motto for years and you enjoy it a lot. But now the bills are due and the credit card that was once your ticket to happiness has turned into a fast pass to misery and shame. You never fully understood what that immediate gratification would actually cost. 
They said it would help with pain. Now you're addicted. Lots of promises, no real results. They're like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. They're like trees in autumn that are doubly dead, for they bear no fruit and have been pulled up by the roots. Fruit trees were tended to, nurtured, supposed to bring fruit. But if they gave nothing during the fruit season, they were uprooted, they were worthless, they were double dead. They had no fruit, and now they've been pulled up. Double dead false teachers don't have the fruit of the Spirit or of a righteous, godly life. There is no evidence of the special relationship with God they claim to have. They talk a good game, they just don't live it. They're like wild waves of the sea, churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. Again, this image is familiar to the original leader, readers. Big wild waves crash against the shore, and when the ocean finally pulls back, the beach is covered with dirty, nasty junk. You've seen that if you've gone to the beach on vacation. In the morning, you find broken shells and seaweed and plastic bottles and trash and junk left behind by the tide. Wild waves bring bad things to the surface. Wrong voices do the same thing. They leave a lot of trash behind. They bring up gossip and lies and they remind you of false hurts. They fill your life with bad stories, broken dreams, broken hearts, messed up lives, and controversy. Their goal is to pull out the worst. Wrong voices want to keep drama going. They want you to see others as the enemy. That's how they lead. Their goal is to get you to turn against someone else. They'll turn you against your parents, your pastors, your church, and right voices. They're like wild waves. And when they finally go, they leave trash behind. Jude finished describing the false teachers, the wrong voices with one more image. They are like wandering stars, doomed forever to blackest darkness. False teachers are like shooting stars. They, they attract a lot of attention. They put on a big show, but they quickly flame out and disappear. They're there in the good times, and then they're gone in the bad times. Wrong voices often look good. They're impressive. They're popular. They draw a crowd with their clever ideas and phrases. But ultimately, all they accomplish is the show. There's no substance, no direction. They lead you nowhere. What an amazing picture of wrong voices. Dangerous reefs that will sink your ship. Shameless shepherds that put themselves first. Rainless clouds that make lots of promises they don't keep. Double dead trees with none of the fruit that comes from following Jesus. Wild waves that leave behind trash and turmoil. Shooting stars that put, you on, a, put on a big show but lead you nowhere. My dad was right. Bad company corrupts good morals. When you listen to the wrong voices, the result is hurt and heartache. They lead you away from God's plan and purpose, and then they abandon you. Now, on the other side, when you surround yourself with right voices, good things happen. They encourage you to do right. They help you think right. They challenge you when you're off track. They celebrate holiness. They want your marriage to last, your faith to be strong, your witness to be consistent. A couple months ago, I, I met two ladies in the guest center. And I always just asked, so how'd you happen to come? Tell me about yourself. And they shared that they just got out of prison. And my response was, well, you can fit in great here because we have plenty of people who did time. So just be honest about it and no one will freak out. And if someone does freak out, they're the problem, not you. And then I asked them, have you changed your phone number? Have you stayed away from old friends? And that fast they said, yes, sir, we are not going back there because we know what happens if we do. 
They started coming to church. They started coming to CR on Tuesday nights because they recognized that they needed new life-giving, encouraging friends. It's what we all need. As I've been talking about wrong voices, no doubt some of you realize you've got some of those in your life. In fact, some of you are listening to a lot of wrong voices. It's time to do the hard work of ending those relationships. You'll never be able to hear from right voices if your ears are filled with wrong voices. So how do you identify right voices? Who should you listen to? Rather than give you a list of names, I wanna share qualities those voices share that will help you choose who you listen to and who you allow in your inner circle. So if you haven't already got out your outline, get it out because this will be something to go back and to consult. The right voice is someone ahead of you in the spiritual journey. They're mature and fruitful. You can't follow someone who's behind you. Listen to people who are mature and fruitful in their Christian experience. This is key. If they're, they're not fruitful, they're not mature. Mature trees bear fruit. Mature Christians have lives that are marked by the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The right voice will disagree with you. They're honest. What you want is people who think like you and tell you what you want to hear. What you need is people who love you enough to tell you the truth, who will challenge you when you're making bad choices, listening to wrong voices, or heading the wrong direction. If you only listen to people who agree with you, your mind will never be stretched, your actions will never be challenged, and your course will never be altered. I thank God for truth tellers in my life. Now, I've got a lot of them. One of the advantages to working with family is brutal honesty. Parker and Tyler are quick to tell me when I'm being stupid, saying something I shouldn't say, thinking wrong, wearing the wrong sweater. <laughs> I'll, I'll try something on or I'll have something online in my cart and I'll be like, what do you guys think? And they're like, too old, dad. You can't do that, you're just too old. <laughs> it hurts, doesn't it? Our staff, many of us have worked together for years. They're not afraid to evaluate me. In fact, I get evaluated every Monday. It's not always easy or pleasant, but I know if I don't have truth tellers, I'll never improve. Our board of directors challenges me. My truth tellers help me remember that my way is not always the right way, it's just my way. Now be careful. There's a difference between truth-telling and criticism or complaining. If your thought was, well, I want to be a truth-teller in your life, you're probably not who I want. <laughs> the goal of the critic is to tear you down. The goal of the complainer is to get what they want. The goal of the truth-teller is to make you better. If you don't know how to tell the difference, you'll let critics and complainers set the agenda. Some people think criticism is a spiritual gift. They're not the people you need in your life. The right voice is someone who loves you. They're caring. This is an important balance point to truth tellers. The right voices aren't mean or hateful. They love you and they have your best interests at heart. Listen to people who love you and have proven it over time. Don't tune out your pastors, your parents, or your recovery sponsors. People often ask me, if you could go back, what would you do different? And I don't have a lot of regrets, but my number one regret is when I was young, I thought there would be an endless supply of people who loved me and had my best interests at heart. And so I let some leaders like that out of my life through busyness and neglect. And now I recognize that loving truth tellers with your best interests at heart are a rare, priceless treasure. You've got to do whatever it takes to keep them in your life. Next, listen to someone who's done what you want to do. They have experience. 
So if you want to build a building, don't learn from me. Learn from Joey Pewitz. He actually builds stuff. If you want to learn how to drive, don't learn from me. I'm a horrible driver. Learn from Pastor Parker. He can drive anything. If you want to learn how to be a good counselor, I'm not your guy. I'm bad at it. Every once in a while, somebody comes and say, well, Pastor Rod, we really want counseling with you, but we know you say you're not good at it. Why well, say I'm not good at it? Because I'm not good at it. <laughs> learn from Pastor Brian. He's really good at it. Now, if you want to learn how to affirm people and help them discover their potential or how to lead a church, I might be able to help you because I've done that. If you want to have a successful marriage, don't listen to your dysfunctional friend with a series of failed relationships. Talk to Martin and Brenda Zermatten. They've been married 60 years, and they're still happy. If you want to learn how to overcome alcoholism and addiction, don't listen to your friend who's in yet another relapse. Listen to Pastor Lane. In January, Pastor Lane will celebrate 20 years free from addiction. It's a good example. Listen to someone who's accomplished what you want to accomplish. The right voice is someone who makes good decisions. They have wisdom. Proverbs chapter 15 says, only the wise can give good advice. It's amazing the people some of you go to for advice. Unbelievable. Why would you trust someone who makes bad decisions to help you make good decisions. Listen to me. You don't want to go to a broke financial planner. You want your financial planner to be driving a nice car and wearing nice clothes. You want them making money because if they can make money for themselves, they can make money for you. You don't want to sign up for a health and wellness coach who's out of shape. The right voice has a history of making good decisions and offering right advice. Our board of directors is made up of men and women with wisdom. They have a track record of doing right in their marriages, their careers, in their ministry. They make good decisions, so they are right people to help our church make good decisions. The right voice is someone you have a heart connection with. Uh, here's the deal. If you don't like someone, regardless of how wise they are, you'll never listen to them. You need to sense chemistry. There needs to be some kind of connection. Don't take advice from people with a bad track record and questionable character. It makes no sense to let them be the primary voice in your life. The right voice is someone whose life you respect. They have character. They're affirming, truth-telling, Bible-based givers who willingly sacrifice their preferences and put others first. The right voice is someone who's faithful in their Christian walk. They're consistent. You say, well, how do I know that? Watch. Watch how they worship. Watch how they give. Watch how they treat people. Watch how they respond when they don't get their own way. Listen to their words. Listen to them as they pray. Observe the fruit of their life. Right voices are people who live holy lives. The right voice is an encourager who when you leave them, you feel better about yourself. I want to teach you an important principle. If someone is critical about others to you, one day they will be critical about you to others. You can count on it. Encouragers look for and find the good in others. And they don't just find it, they say it. Encouraging others is biblical. Look at these verses, 1 Thessalonians 5. Encourage one another and build each other up. That's a command, not a suggestion. Ephesians chapter 4. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only... What is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. That'd be a good test. If you're only supposed to say things that build people up and benefit them, some of you wouldn't get to talk much. Right? And the rest of us, we'd be grateful. 
Hebrews chapter 10, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching, surrounding yourself with right voices is one reason it's important to be part of a church family. I love online church and I understand many people made the transition in COVID and now online is their thing. I love online church, but one of the challenges of online church is developing relationships with right voices. Sometimes you need to show up so you can meet people. Now, are there wrong voices here? Now, I'm not gonna point them out, <laughs> but sure. Because not everyone who attends church is a Christian. They, they need to be here. But there are a lot of right voices. People who love you and have your best interests at heart. So if you're coming to church, but you're not building relationships with the right people, I challenge you to take the next step. Attend a connection class on Saturday night or on Sunday mornings or on Wednesday nights. Get involved in a ministry. Join the choir. Invite someone out to eat. Sign up for the week of giving. Invest the time and energy to make friends with the right voices. You have to take the step. Proverbs 12, 26 says, the righteous choose their friends carefully. It is not oversimplification to say that your life will change for the better if you quit listening to wrong voices and you start listening to right voices. And then I want to finish with a, a challenge for you. Be the right voice. Don't just listen to right voices. You be the right voice. And be realistic. Evaluate yourself. Look back over the outline. In what ways are you like the false teachers in the book of Jude? And what are areas of being a right voice that you need to develop? Here's the key. Listening to right voices is how you become a right voice. The people who speak into your life, your close inner circle, go a long way towards forming who you are. Now you say, so Pastor Rod, I shouldn't have any friends who aren't believers. That's not what I said. What I said was, your close inner circle, the people who speak into your life, the people who influence and affect you the most, they need to be right voices so you'll do right things and follow right directions and you'll become a right voice. Would you bow your heads with me? I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray for you two ways. Number one, if you say, Pastor Rod, while you're talking, I recognize I have some wrong voices in my life and I need to make some changes. That's you, just raise your hand. We're gonna pray. Yeah, thanks. If you're watching online, just click the button for prayer. Number two, you say, please pray for me because I need some right voices in my life. Maybe, maybe you isolated in COVID and you stayed isolated. Maybe you just haven't intentionally added the right people to your life. You say, pray for me because I need some right voices. You raise your hand. I'm gonna pray for you too. Of course. Heavenly Father, I pray for these today. Lord, first I pray for people who have allowed wrong voices to become part of their close inner circle. They've got reasons for it, excuses, justification. But they recognize they've allowed wrong voices to, to have a big say in their life and in their decisions. I pray you'd give them the courage and the character to make some changes in who they allow to speak closely. And Lord, I pray for people who say, I really need some right voices. I'm lacking that. Lord, we recognize that people who love us and have our best interests at heart are a rare, priceless treasure, but they're available and we find them in the family of God. I pray, Lord, that you would you'd help people to, to reach out, to connect, 
to get involved, to go beyond just showing up at church and to form intentional relationships with the right voices that will help them to go right directions for right reasons. And Lord, to help us all to be right voices. In a world that's negative and discouraging, critical and complaining, it is far too easy for us to fall into the pattern of looking for what's wrong. Forgive us for that. And Lord, help us to look for what's right and to say what's right and to encourage and build up each other as together we pursue your plan and your purpose. Lord, we love you. We thank you for a church family where we can have right voices in our life. We recognize what a gift that is and we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen.